Hi, I'm Karina Walter, and welcome to the Standard Newsroom for our monthly chat with the mayor. I'm here with Mayor Walter Sunzik. Welcome. Great to be back. You look very casual today. It's a beautiful day. It's Friday. It's dress down Fridays, so this is my attempt at dressing down. Okay. <laughs> well, I think you were probably dressed up a little more last night for a regional council meeting. I want to get right into that. Yeah, it was, uh, a, it was a late meeting. Yes, and dual duty came up again briefly, I understand. Ever so briefly, and it was uh, yet again deferred and uh, sent back down to the city for apparently a, a, another kind of public meeting. And um, it's unfortunate that the very nature of what public meeting is defined as under the Municipal Act and, and what um, an individual is looking for are two different things. And so it's, it's kind of hard when you're in a form like that and an individual comes up and is confused about what has transpired to date, even though the individual has been at the public meetings and has been at the town hall. And then you're, you have a, a regional council that says, okay, well, I guess we'll just uh, defer it until another p public meeting is held. So it's, it's the proverbial kicking the can down the road instead of dealing with the issue at hand and either saying yes or no to the issue and sending it down to the lower tier municipalities. It's kind of frustrating because you, you really get a sense that if, if corporations or boards operated this way, and I've sat on a number of boards in terms of my career as, as being in business, it, I've never been in a situation where something or, or issues are referred or deferred as much as they are. And you really start to see how government slows down. And I think that's where the public gets a lot of its frustration from is you have this inability, these, the, the folks who are elected to make decisions have an inability to make the decision. They just, they refer it or defer it. And it's unfortunate, uh, but it's democracy. And what you want to do is, is now work with the clerk's office of the city of St. Catharines and figure out what are we able to do um, to meet the wishes of one person. And, uh, but in a democratic process, one person can drive everything to a halt. And that's essentially what's happened now. So just to back up then, so it went to the region. Mm -hmm. Somebody made a, George Dart made a presentation a few months back. Yep. The region said the city should hold a public meeting yep. to discuss um, the dual duty. I was at that meeting. Yep. Um, it was at the Performing Arts Center. And More people showed up than that than has ever been out for a <laughs> governance meeting. So that it went back to the region last night, yep. and um, they basically asked George the city Dart presented to, again. to hold another meeting. Well, George presented it, Mr. Dart presented again, and. and didn't understand the concept of public meetings and sort of the the uh, the, ma the the legislation behind it. And so, but it know. seemed like a lot of the other regional councillors agreed with him because they've told the city to go ahead and do another meeting. Well, it was one councillor in particular, a Niagara Falls councillor, which is interesting because it's you know you've got a Niagara Falls councillor trying to say to the city of St. Catharines, you're not doing your job, which is disappointing as well because I, I would never want to be in a situation where I'm. I'm telling Niagara Falls how to do their job or what they can define as, as an issue. And so it was one counselor who decided to say, well, let, let's refer this back to the city. And, you know, unfortunately, a, a majority of counselors says, well, okay, let's do that. And so now we've got to work with the clerk's office to, to figure out what our next steps are. But again, if you're looking at we want to tackle, and, and, and Karina, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on this point. There's, there's folks out there who say this is a, 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 a solution in search of a problem. That's the farthest thing from the truth. It's, it's like if you were in business and you were sitting there looking at your business and you say, I'm never going to do anything until there's a problem, you're not going to be in business for very long. That's just the reality. So we're looking at modernizing governance and how this will make a, us more effective as a city within the region. And I think those are all positives. And unfortunately, we're getting stuck on this when we should be making decisions on this issue of dual role. And then it does get in the way of, of pursuing affordable housing, looking at our, our job attraction strategies, and, and really focusing on all aspects of what makes communities strong. So it's, it's unfortunate, but I, I think at the end of the day, we'll, we'll get to a resolution, and it'll position St. Catharines very well. And it's just taken a little longer than I thought. But I come from the business world. Things happen at a much quicker pace in the business world. Fortunately, uh, maybe some of those who are accustomed to the government side, they are content with the slower pace of government. I know you were hoping that it would all be wrapped up by the end of this year, that it would actually go to the 12 municipalities and everything would sort of be in place for the province to 
to get it all ready for the 2018 election. So how just much does this set back that process? It's just a minor setback. We, okay. we have, we still have, a, we have some room to get to the 2018 ballot. Um, but again, it, it just, it's taking up time that's not required. We've, we've met all the metrics of hosting public meetings. So it's just a matter of this is taking time away from other aspects that both the city and the region should be focused on. And uh, that's, I think, where the sense of frustration goes. Is it's, 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 we're elected to make decisions. We're not elected to punt the, punt the ball, punt the football down the, down, down the football field. Do you know how this new meeting is going to be different from the other one? No idea. No idea. That's, okay. the, um, that's the novelty of all this when an individual who has no idea what a public meeting stands for is continuously asking for a public meeting. It's hard to say and define what it is. So the clerk's office, I think, will provide some, some clarity on that. Okay. The other issue, which we've talked a lot about in the last couple of weeks, is the ice dogs donation. I'm right. just wondering what the status of that is right now. We've had productive discussions with the Burks, and, and I, will, I will say they are very upfront. Uh, their frustrations were heard loud and clear. Uh, we've got to work through some of those issues in, in order to get back to a position where there's a mutual level of trust and respect in terms of uh, the donation and the overall approach to the relationship between the Ice Dogs and the City of St. Catharines. So you know, they've given us some, some information that we're looking over. They've provided us with uh, an outline of frustrations that they've had with the city. And now it's our job to bring that forward, look at it, bring it forward, and consider what the next steps are. But I, I will say they've been very forthcoming, um, immediate in terms of having the meeting, setting the meeting up, clearing their schedules so that we can meet. Uh, and, and they are as committed as I am to coming to a resolution that respects the impact that the Ice Dogs have in our community, uh, respects the fact that the Burks are very generous and, and good people in our community. They're, they've brought economic development through their team back to our downtown. And as such, we want to be willing partners at the table as a city as well. So, you know, it's a there, there's some complexity to the issues, uh, but we're working through it, and both parties are are willing partners, which is good to see. How much of an impact does a one million dollar donation make on the taxpayers? It, it's it, I don't want to underestimate it. It's it's a big impact. It's one percent on the tax base. When you look at a million dollars in terms of if we don't get that to the Meridian Center as, as a capital project. That means we have to incur more debt on the overall capital project because we've been counting on that million dollars to come in. So it'll have a reverberation on the overall financial picture of the, uh, of the city. And it's just not something that would sit well with me if we knew we had a million dollars and it's no longer on the table. And, no matter if it's a million, five hundred thousand, or a hundred thousand, these are dollars that are important to us, and they're important because the city built these buildings, and we want to make these buildings as affordable as possible, and we want to keep our property taxes at a at a rate that's affordable for the pub for the people as well. So, we're gonna we're working hard to resolve the matter. And you and I have been talking about the donation policy as well yesterday, and I'm just wondering if you can. Um, speak a little bit about that too, about how that might change. Well, and, and like we were talking about, there is, it's not, it's not central to what we do as a corporation. We don't go out and fundraise on a regular basis. So it is, it is new to what we do in, in terms of our overall operation. So there's areas that there may be some gaps. So with the report coming from the CAO, we'll have a better understanding of, of what's transpired between the Performing Arts Center and the Meridian Center and the Kiwana Center and figure out if, if there were gaps and, and how to create a stronger policy so what happened with the Burks doesn't happen again. Again, that was the previous term of council and no blame to them, but they were in a period of seeking a lot of donations for a lot of buildings. So I can imagine that a lot of things may have fell through the cracks. That shouldn't happen on a, on in, in that shouldn't happen. There's an expectation from the public that should never happen. So we're going to make sure, as as a prudent business and as someone who's been in business for a long time, that we're going to close those gaps. And that's what we're looking for in the report: is is there anything outstanding? And then how do we close this gap so it doesn't happen in the future? 
Got a couple of questions. Uh, we opened it up to readers and they asked us about transit and gridlock and downtown revitalization. So yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot. So I'll start with one, uh, an email that came in from someone who asked if uh, the mayor could provide some insight into talks for a one consolidated transit system. So I'm the chair of the Intermissile Transit System, so it's a great question. It's something that we've been working on for just about a year now, a little more than a year. And we're now in the, in the, in the final stages. The consultant, Dylan's Consulting, has come out with a preferred model. Uh, the preferred model is now going through public uh, consultations. There was one on Wednesday at the Aquatic Center. Aquana's Aquatic Center in St. Catharines. There's one in Niagara Falls. There's one in Welland, and there's going to be one in West Lincoln Grimsby. And so those are opportunities for the public to see the model that has been the preferred model and the other models that were reviewed in the report. It'll come to council for input, and that'll allow us to have a more robust discussion once it gets in front of the Council of St. Catharines, Well, and Niagara Falls. So we're moving towards an integrated municipal transit system. What that looks like and what the model looks like is where the decisions are going to have to be made. Uh, but I, I think we've come farther than any other council um, from between St. Catharines, Welland, and Niagara Falls than we have ever come when it comes to intermissible transit. We are very close, and if all the parties can be at the table and we can come up with a preferred model that we can all agree on, uh, I think you're going to see a strong intermissible transit system in the region very, very soon. Do you put timelines on those kinds of things? Well, we're looking, we, we'd like to have decisions of council by spring of 2017. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping that the, the councils of St. Catharines, Welland, and Niagara Falls will have had the, the opportunity to deliberate and cast their decision on the model that they would prefer. And if there is a unanimity of a model uh, that rises to the top, uh, that would set the stage for what will be the move towards integrated regional transit that will really position us from an economic and social standpoint for the next 20, 30 years. And that's something to be excited for. The same person was asking about uh, what are the chances that gridlock around the Glendale 406 area will be fixed to deal with increased traffic demands? Well, I could say that there's probably <laughs> going to be more gridlock before not because that area is uh, a regional road and we have approved uh, more enhancements to the area outside of the clover leaf of the highway interchanges. So beyond that scope, there will be more work heading towards what would be the, the Penn Center area. There is a considerable amount of road reconstruction that will take place that will hopefully align the traffic flow a little bit more. And so anticipating more gridlock and in, in that the future is having a, a more easier flow of traffic. That includes bike lanes and, and everything else associated with it. So that area is under construction. We've got the, the, the rail bridge in, on, on Glendale that's on Glen Ridge Road that's under construction. We have the Burgoyne Bridge that's under construction. We now have Martindale Road that's under construction. So I can say to folks, you're going to see a lot of construction signs in the city. And as someone who went to Kitchener-Waterloo a couple weeks ago for my son's hockey game, uh, what I noticed was a considerable amount of road construction and, and realignment and, and investment. That's a sign that a community is investing. That's a sign that we're improving our infrastructure, whether it's water mains, whether it's sewers, or whether it's road resurfacing or reconstruction. Uh, those are your dollars hard at work. And while they are frustrating, and trust me, I've gotten stuck in some traffic already, it's a sign that our city's growing. And that's a very positive sign. So if we can get through some periods of road reconstruction, understand that our infrastructure will be much better for it. And it does really show that the city's starting to grow, which is a, a good sign. And on a related note, I heard that the um, roundabouts on 7th Street have opened today, or, or right. last night, actually. The so roundabouts are open. Yep, I so. love roundabouts. I really do. I, I find them quite enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Now, I haven't gotten stuck in one yet, but I love how it just allows traffic to flow. It's such a, I'll say this, it's such a civilized way of just moving hmm. through intersections. Yes. You don't have to wait for the red lights. You just... Well, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very European way of mm -hmm. travel, and I, I'm glad the region is and, the, and, and the, the MTO are bringing more of those roundabouts to our community so we can get used to them. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't get stuck in it like Chevy Chase going around and around. I, it uh, maybe, okay. and it's a choice. You can get stuck in it and just keep going round and round. Yes. <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day with Double Direct. Just feel like going round and around. You keep waking up, <laughs> waking up. 
Well, that's probably a good note to end it today. So I appreciate you joining us again as usual. Oh, are you in the Santa Claus parade this weekend by any chance? <laughs> um, yes, I will be in the parade so downtown St. Catharines. You can watch for Mayor Walter Sendick <laughs> in the parade. Thanks for, for joining us.